Welcome to the first ever episode of the Star City Culture Committee, a daily Nebraskan podcast where we interview the brightest minds and coolest cats in Lincoln culture. I'm Mark Champion, the senior culture editor at the Daily Nebraskan. I'm joined by a couple crackerjack editors. I'll let them introduce themselves. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, my name is David Berman. Um, I am a uh, assist- assistant culture editor at the Daily Nebraskan, and I'm going to be a senior at, uh, sorry, a junior at UNL uh, this year. Um, so the inaugural guest of the SCCC is Jack Rodenberg. Um, Jack is part of Lincoln Band's The Wildwoods and a Ferocious Jungle Cat and is the organizer of Lincoln Strong, which is a weekly live stream music festival formed to benefit local musicians and venues that have been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Hey guys, I'm Jenna Thompson. I'm also an assistant culture editor and I'm going to be a junior at UNL. Um, Jack was gracious enough to stop by via Zoom today to chat about the local music scene and how it's been affected by COVID-19 among other topics. So without further, further ado, let's get right into the conversation. Well, we're here with Jack Rodenberg today. Uh, thank you so much, Jack, for joining us on the first ever episode of the Star City Culture Committee. Um, how do you feel about being our first guest? I'm honored. Thank you so much for having me. I think it's awesome what you guys are doing. This this type of thing needs to happen more. And i um, just very grateful that you'd consider me as the first guest. So thank you. Cool, cool. Um, so if you could just start off by giving us a little bit of your background in music and kind of just where our listeners may know you from in the Lincoln and kind of greater Nebraska community. Well, I was born and raised in Lincoln. So I've been making friends um, my whole life here. And uh but I've uh, just recently started um, getting in- involved in the music scene. Um, but I'm in the bands A Ferocious Jungle Cat, um, The Wild Woods, The House Band, um, and then a bunch of wedding bands like uh, Downtown Collective, Diamond Empire Band. Um, then I have my own band um, that I'm just kind of uh, recently kind of unveiling, uh, Jack Rodenberg. Um, and, uh, but, I went to school here at UNL, uh, studied math and physics. So I have friends that I've met through here. I was in a fraternity, SIGEP. So I have some connections there. Um, And um, my family's been here for three generations now. Uh, So I was born into a a glorious, uh, you know, community where I have a lot of connections through my parents and grandparents who have been wonderful here as well. So um, yeah, a little bit of everything. I'm, I'm doing a little bit of everything here. Um, so you're in a whole lot of bands, it seems like. Uh-huh. Um, first of all, like what instruments do you play? And then what style of music do you and your bands like to play? Uh, I play the keyboard mainly. Um, nice. I, I play other instruments, but I'm not, not good enough to be uh, accepted into other bands. <laughs> um, <laughs> but keyboard is my main instrument. And um, let's see, like, I I love spreading myself out. I love all different types of music. Um, So A Frosis Jungle Cat, we're like funk, um, like kind of like a little bit of experimental, like rock, um, but mostly like funk, like dance, like a little bit of like disco almost, like soul kind of vibes. Um, And that's mostly originals. We have like one or two covers, but uh, that's like, they were already banned before I joined. So like, they were like my <laughs> biggest introduction to the music scene. So I'm very grateful to be in that band. Um, then I'm in the Wild Woods. It's like a folk Americana singer songwriter type band um, led by Noah and Chloe Ghost. And they've become some of my best friends in the whole world. And they, uh, Noah and Chloe Ghost just actually moved in down the street. So uh, it's been a blast to live in the same neighborhood as them. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, and then the wedding bands like pop, you know, like, uh, don't believe me, just watch uh, Uptown Funk, go give it to, you know, like Uptown Funk, Don't Stop Believing, you know, all the pop tunes of the songs get everyone singing. Oh. Uh, so yeah, a little bit of everything. I've been in country bands, I've been in blues bands. Um, the house band is like a, we kind of do like, like chunky, like Wolfpack style funk. Um, so lots of different genres. Uh, there really hasn't been a genre I haven't, maybe like atonal, or like dubstep is the is the the last frontiers for me but a little bit of everything keyboard is the main instrument though nice nice other than your own who are your some who are some of your favorite local bands oh man well right off the top uh misanjix uh they like 
blow me away every single time I hear them. Um, led by singer songwriter uh, Mary Lawson, um, they're just like like the only the only word that comes to mind is divine. It's just like what am I witnessing? This is like so so magical. Um, they're probably like my favorite local band. Um, man, I'm. Uh, let's see. It's, geez, it's. I'm trying to think. I've been in a lot of bands, so like, let's come my favorite bands of like. Uh, um, I feel honored to be in Approach Jungle Cat because like before I was in the band, they were like, humbly speaking, they were um, they were definitely one of my favorite bands. Um, let's see. Let me think about that for a second. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, Emily Bass. She kills it. She's such an inspiration. She's a piano player, singer, songwriter. She's like, she like takes you right to church. Like, I, like I'm at the zoo bar. I'm like, wait, like, am I at church now? Like, it's great. She's just like got so much soul. Um, she's like, she can, she's like the difference between like singing. Like, she not only can she sing, but like she can sing. You know what I'm saying? It's like, she's like, oh, like all this soul comes out of her. It's amazing. Um, and Josh Hoyer. I love that guy. He's, he's uh, amazing. Jack Hotel, uh, led by Gunter. They're like a folk Americana band. Um, man, there's like so many options. Uh, everything that Mitch Towns does up in Omaha with the jazz scene, they're great. Um, uh, Mitch Towns is like a jazz organist and he's just like, I'm just like, oh my gosh, he's so good. <laughs> um, let's see, some of my... Um, uh andy vagalis an incredible singer songwriter kind of in the wolfpeck beatles stevie wonder style um miles jasnowski is a really good friend of mine really funky um and he's in a couple of those bands with me so uh um let's see one of my favorite bands of all time is since disbanded but uh cj mills she's up in philadelphia she's still killing it but she used to be in a band here in town um Oh man, I know I'm gonna get done with this and just immediately be like, how did I not say this band? Uh, there's so many great bands in town. It's like really a joy to just get to know everyone. And um, I've been in other cities like like uh, like uh, Nashville and, and a couple other towns where it's like really competitive. There's a lot of like, just like uh, me, me, you know, like, but like with Lincoln, it's like, oh, like you're a, you're a band, you're doing something. And everyone really comes to, comes together and support. Oh, Jonathan Leach. Thank gosh. I didn't forget about, I didn't forget about him, man. He's, he's one of my favorites. He's, uh, we have, we have like a, he's like one, he's another singer songwriter, um, uh, keyboard player in town. And he's like, I know we like inspire each other. Uh, and, and we kind of give each other like, we like kind of tease each other that we're like rivals, but we're like, we're like really, really good friends. And he just came out with a single called cabin fever, which is like just pure art. It's amazing. I love it so much. Um, man, I could go on and on and on. Um, yeah, I'll just cut it off there though. If I think of another band, uh, while I'm, while I'm doing this interview, I'll, I'll just shout it out randomly. Okay. <laughs> cool. Cool. Um, so obviously, you know, the coronavirus pandemic, it's really impacted all corners of the world, all, all industries. Um, but what ways have you seen the Lincoln music scene change during, uh, during the pandemic? Oh, man, it's been, I think one of the industries has been, you know, changed the most because, you know, we play shows. We, our job is to get as many people together at once as, as possible. So it's been a totally just revolutionary shift um we've basically all had to figure out how to do live stream concerts um very quickly that was something that you know a couple months ago really no one in town was doing very much and now that's the only way to play a show is via live stream so um and then of course the venues are also being hit uh, very hard too because we can't you know we if we had a kind of a symbiotic relationship going on um, so both the venues and, and the music, the music scene has been seriously impacted. Um, and myself, I'm a professional musician, not, not by like, not saying I'm good or anything, but just all of my income, uh, comes from playing shows, particularly weddings and like events and stuff. So, uh, it's been a, I'm, I'm lucky I have a little bit of money saved up or else I would be, I would be like totally out of luck. Um, but we've all had to figure out, you know, how to make things do, but it's been great to see the community really come together and support our, the music scene. Um, 
but yeah, we've all had to figure out how to set up webcams and set up our audio and cause it's tough. You know, we're, we're used to showing up and just be like, all right, you know, doing a sound check when there's, there's a dedicated sound engineer, there's a dedicated person setting up the venue, sending out invites and stuff. But now it's like pretty much all on the artist to make sure you sound good, you look good. And you're also playing, you know, you're, you're doing your musical thing. So, uh, it's been a, it's been a total 180 um, for all the musicians in town. So <clears throat> you touched on this a little bit, but um, how has your personal music career been affected? Like, I know you played on uh, the Lincoln Calling live stream, right? Yep. Uh -huh. like, how, how has all that been going? Oh, man, it, it was uh, some, some much needed medicine. It's like, <laughs> like, whoa, that's, uh, it's not very tasty, but because like I did a couple live streams and I was incredibly disappointed in myself for a couple reasons. Like, first of all, like the audio quality and the video quality, I was just like, that's the best I could do. Like, what? <laughs> oh, it's like all grainy and it's clipping in and out. And I was like, oh, um, and then second of all, my musicianship, I'm used to playing a show and everyone's kind of drunk or whatever. And I was like, woo, you know, yeah, you're so good. And it's like, oh yeah. All right. And I get home. Like that was cool. You know, I must be cool. <laughs> But now at the live stream, I get done and I'm like, there's like no one to be like, good job. It's just like, whoa. And then I, and then immediately you go back and watch it because it's like a permanent thing. Mm. And man, I went through a couple of uh, tough days uh, on bordering on a couple of weeks where I was just like, man, I thought I was better than this, like mu musically. Um, so it's been a huge, they say like Michael Jackson used to get done with the show, like playing in an arena and he would just like go right back to his hotel room and just watch himself. And I always used to think, dang, man, that's dedication. But I can see how you get a lot better if you did that. Mm. Um, and so I'm, I'm now doing that because it's live stream. So I just like get done. I'm just like, all right, well, might as well watch it. You know, um, I got a looper pedal, which has been a huge source of inspiration. Um, Cause you know, I, I rely on uh, other people to provide that, like, you know, the pocket where you're like, oh, and then I just like, bleh, 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 I can do whatever I want on top. But now it's like, oh no, I'm, I'm all alone here. So I got to like do the drums, the bass and all the things. Um, so the looper pedal has definitely been the main, uh, it's like musical revolution. It's been so inspiring recently to, to be playing around with that. Nice. Would you say that this has been like a constructive period for you then? <sighs> definitely, man. Definitely. Really? Yes, absolutely. Um, I've been, you know, like I said, I've just, I've really honed in on all like my weaknesses. It's like, Oh, that's how I sound yeah. when I sing. Interesting. How do I change that? I'm not too happy <laughs> with that. Um, and, um, you know, cause when you play live, it just kind of fades into the past. Um, and you get really encouraged by the people around you. So it's easy to, it's easy to just, be, become complacent but when you're doing live streams there's no one clapping afterwards you're like oh am i even doing okay and then you go back and watch <laughs> yourself you're like, oh. um and the looper pedal has particularly been constructive because it's like a mirror you know i'm like, boots, k, boots, k. I'm like oh it sounds good i'm right on the beat and then i listen back and i'm like oh wait a second oh no and i'll have to redo it and redo it and redo it until i'm perfect so it's uh that that particularly has been like and and vocal wise you know i, I when i'm singing i feel like i'm singing well and if I'm doing it live, it's, you know, there's no one there to check me, but with the Luber pedal, it just repeats right back to you. So it's like, I get to experiment. You know, what if I try to sound like Frank Sinatra? What if I try to sound like Stevie Wonder? What if I'm trying to sound like an opera singer and I get to go through all the different uh, techniques and, and see what sounds the best, regardless of how it feels um, to me. So it's been hugely constructive actually. Yeah, cool. that's cool. Um, Jack, could you kind of talk about your work with Lincoln Strong and how that came to be? Uh, sure. Yeah. It, it's actually kind of um, a funny random story. Uh, I have a friend, um, Sh Charlie Schilling, um, and he works at Pinnacle Bank Arena. And um, he's uh, he knows my parents and we're like family friends. And uh, his daughter, Sydney, was like, hey, uh, Pinnacle Bank Arena should do like a live stream music festival uh and he was like great idea so he like gathered the team at pinnacle bank arena and they like started organizing it and um he asked me to book and organize the musicians um and this was like four days you're so like all right let's do it this thursday and it was like sunday it's like oh okay let's do it 
Um, so we like, I asked a bunch of musicians, Emily Bass, Joey Plunkett, Josh Hoyer, Wild Woods. Um, and then over the course of the next three or four days, um, Pinnacle Bank Arena decided instead of like hosting it themselves, they would rather be supporters of it. Um, so they've donated their marketing team. Uh, they, they donated their like email list. They send out email blasts every week. They share it from their Facebook page, which has like 50,000 likes. Um, uh, and, and they've donated their graphic designer, Katie McKinnon, who's doing an incredible job. Uh, so they're, they're like the huge supporters in this. Um, but over the next three or four days, they were like, Hey Jack, if you want to just lead this and we'll support you, but if you want to be this, if this be your thing, then like, by all means, take the reins. Um, so I was like, are you sure? You know, I don't know anything. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, but it turned out really well and I've made a bunch of mistakes. Um, but the community at large has just been so, uh, gracious and like forgiving and loving. And it's been wonderful to see the community rally around uh, the cause of supporting local musicians. Yeah, That's awesome. for sure. Um, and so you touch on this a little bit, but what has been the response you've received um, from both artists and the general public about Lincoln Strong? All positive. It's been great. Uh, the mayor has shouted us out weekly on her uh, mayoral uh, press conference or press briefing. And it's, uh, she's amazing. Uh, Larry and Gaylor Baird, she's like one of my heroes. Um, I'm, and I'm, I'm like tickled that she like knows who I am. Um, and she's, she's been great. She shared every, every, uh, week's, week's, uh, um, lineup on her, on her Thursday broadcast, um, which has been huge. Um, really the whole, it feels like everyone is like coming together to support the artists have, um, it's, it's helped them hone in their performance. And we've raised so far we've raised there's 17 artists in April and May, and we've raised $150 for each artist, um, which is great. And it's not, you know, it's not going to solve all their problems, but um, it's, 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 it goes, you know, a little bit goes a long ways. And that's just the behind the scenes fundraising each week. You know, we, we, there, we drive a bunch of traffic to their page. Like I said, Pinnacle Bank Arena has been very generously sharing with their uh, fan base. So there's like, we're all getting connected with people that we would have never uh, met before people from different states and all over um, that follow Pinnacle Bank Arena, but would have never heard of, of uh, you know, the Wildwoods or Past Casual or, oh, another great band in town, Past Casual. They're so awesome. They're like a jazz fusion band, uh, funk pop singer songwriter. They got Jonah plays a steel drum sometimes. Oh, it's so cool. Um, but yeah, it's been ultimately wonderful. I had one uh, artist tell me like it's the first time she's ever gotten paid for a music festival. So that was, that was kind of cool. It's like, Hey, nice. We're doing something right here. Amazing. Uh, what's been like the most memorable part about all that? Oh man. Oh, well, <laughs> I, uh, the first week was pretty crazy. <laughs> we were like coming up with graphics, like organizing all this stuff, like figuring out the ins and outs. Um, the first week stands out as like, like jumping to the, not only like jumping into the deep end, but like the deep end is like ice cold water or something. It was just like, ah, what am I doing? Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, it felt like I all of a sudden had a load of responsibility in an area that I've have no experience in. Um, so it's, uh, <laughs> the first week, like people like my mom and my dad were like really supportive and, and like, fielded my phone calls quite often um but but since then it's been just so wonderful to like kick back relax um do the little work that's that's necessary and uh and and just enjoy every thursday it's it's two hours of like righteous beautiful local music um and and really and then the, the other part is like i've strangely paradoxically never felt more connected with the with the community um, just, just because I'm used to, you know, sh showing up like, Hey, much, it's my time to shine, baby. And everyone's like, Jack Rodenberg. I'm like, woo. Yeah. But now it's, now I'm the one being like Emily Bass or like, you know, Josh Hoyer. So it's re been really cool to step out of the spotlight and, and, um, let other people shine. And that's, that's been really memorable for me. It's been so fulfilling to like, to, to support other artists and, um, local businesses and restaurants and venues and stuff. 
Yeah, that's so cool. Um, do you have plans for Lincoln Strong after um, this COVID stuff is all over? Oh yeah. Um, you know, we'll see. I, I'm, I'm always, I'm always open-minded. Um, but yeah, definitely. I, I, I love the music festivals, festivals that are going on yearly, notably Lincoln Calling, Lincoln Exposed, uh, Folk and Roots Music Festival. Um, let's see what, uh, um, oh, Funk and Soul Alliance organized by Josh Hoyer. Um, but they're mainly like one weekend. There's like 40 shows. And it's awesome because everyone goes out downtown and everyone's like, woo, there's a music festival going on. It's beautiful. But I think Lincoln Strong has a kind of a different thing to offer in that we're going to do a weekly thing instead of packing 100 artists into a weekend. We're doing like two artists a week every every week on Thursday. Um, and I, you know, I have a lot of ideas. I've always wanted to do a music festival in a park. Like uh, um, Pinewood Bowl would be a huge, huge step up. But I'm like Antelope Park. Um, has a little stage uh, that's like very cheap, reasonable to rent. So I've always wanted to do that, get people outside, get people in nature, kind of lower the volume a little bit, all ages, maybe some food. Um, uh, so I'm really excited to kind of uh, criticize by creating, so to speak, because I have like, as a performer, I go to music festivals, I'm playing at music festivals all the time. And I kind of have, I'm just kind of, I've been noticing myself getting a little uh, critical, like uh, everything's too loud or like, you know, mm -hmm. like I, I don't feel comfortable inviting my friends who like have had problems with alcohol in the past. And like, uh, and also I can't invite my students who are like 12, you know, cause mm -hmm. it's bar and it's like, this, we were playing at 1am. I can't invite my grandma. Cause like I said, it's like way too loud and it's at 1am. So I'm excited to provide a different uh, type of experience. Uh, once we can gather in large numbers um again uh, mainly outdoors with food if we could get away with a potluck that'd be the best but there's to so many uh food vendors in town like pepe juju um that i would love to kind of support with it stransky park is like a, a, the golden standard for this type of idea um and like jazz in june and stuff they do a really good job so kind of in that same vein and i think there's room for lincoln strong to kind of slide in <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. What do you think shows will be like in the whole scene as a whole once shows start back up? Good question, man. <laughs> I, I bet it'll get I bet it'll get weird. I bet people <laughs> like because I know I cannot wait to be around a bunch of people again. Like I didn't think that was something I missed. I'm a pretty big introvert, but like I can't wait to walk into a room full of like a hundred people. It's, it seems like <laughs> such a simple thing, um, and especially like 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 funk but like i'm really excited for our first uh, ferocious jungle cat show um where we can like get all sweaty and dance get all you know uh i think it's i think we'll see a lot of release people will go even crazier than they're used to just because it's like finally you know mm -hmm. i can feel someone else's heat <laughs> oh yeah i yeah. can't wait to yeah. feel other people's heat to be honest <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, for, for sure, Mark. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> me too, man. You can't trust me. <laughs> right yeah, me and you, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Jack, just got one more question for you, um, which is how can people continue to support local music during this time? Um, oh, man. Like, uh, well, just like spreading the word, you know, um, liking your favorite artist page and, and, uh, buying their album, you know, from Bandcamp instead of just like streaming it and um, tipping them when they go live. Um, uh, you know, most artists like have a little Venmo link that you can tip. Um, and Lincoln Strong, it, we're trying to, we're trying to incorporate as many musicians that like depend on um, music to make their living. Uh, so if you want to donate to Lincoln Strong, you can go to uh, Venmo.com slash Lincoln Strong and uh, whatever you donate will be split uh 16 well actually like the math is weird because one week there's three so that's getting split three ways but basically it'll be split 16 ways um and uh and then we're going to fundraise again for june and july and so that's a pretty safe way to support uh them and well, you know mainly just send them your love and if it's in the form of money or encouragement or whatever you know we we, we really appreciate all the support we can get this is like me everyone loves music so it's like really cool to talk about music but i got one i got one uh um 
passion that I got to share before this is over, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Right, go, for go for it. Garden. It's time to garden, everybody. Like, we've been illogically and, like, kind of crazily, like, I don't know. I've never heard a good reason to mow yet. Everyone's <laughs> like, well, my neighbor's doing it. It's like, okay, but why is your neighbor doing it? Like, ah, well, his neighbor's doing it. It's like, well, dude, that's a weird thing. We all went and howled at the moon every night. Would you be, you know, it's like weird. <laughs> Um, and it's super loud and polluting and like grass is our most grown crop by area and fertilizer and water and pesticide in America. It's our most grown crop, even though we, we don't use it. We just mow it down. So it's really, really, really strange. And gardening has been proven to lower anxiety and Lord knows we could all use a little less anxiety these days. Um, improve your immune system, which Lord knows we could all use uh, some immune help, immune system help. Um, and it's been in my life, it's been the most fulfilling activity out of anything else, even, even above music. It's like when I'm gardening, especially native plants, I'm just like, there's no way this can go wrong. You know, there's, this is like the ultimate wholesome activity and selfishly, it's like, I'm getting so much good benefit out of it, but I know that deep down I'm like helping the ecology. And, you know, it goes without saying that we're literally in our uh, sixth mass extinction that our Earth has ever faced. And it's might be due to humans. <laughs> I don't know, only that interpretation probably is. Um, so, you know, like expand your compassion circle to include the animals. And if you include animals, then you'll include plants. If you include plants, you'll include soil. It all goes, it's all the full circle of life. So, um, and we're supposed to be separating, you know, so get into the garden, you know, plant some food, uh, regain some independence and, and really connect with the earth again. I think that'll, that's like my one, one piece of advice for everyone listening. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, Jack, what? loved having you on the show, man. Uh, we, you know, love to have you uh, on again down the road. If you'd like to come back and talk about gardening, that would be awesome. <laughs> oh man, I could rant. Sure on and on <laughs> come over i'll give you plants i got sun chokes and green onions and you can eat dandelions so if you think gardening is hard just don't mow and then whatever grows will probably be edible and delicious and nutritious so it's pretty easy actually <laughs> cool cool well thanks again man and uh hope you have a good rest of your night thank you guys so much thank you thanks honor to be here y'all thanks so much again to jack for coming on and being our first guest and thanks to all of you for tuning in. This has been the Star City Culture Committee, a daily Nebraska Lincoln Culture podcast. I'm Mark Champion, joined by David Bertman and Jenna Thompson. Until next time, see you around Star City. Bye.